stars. Number 138 in progress. We have a problem. Attention problem podcast. With a nightmare. One old lady died in there. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> nice. Party. Oh, my feces <laughs> has more gas than PNM. Potential problems podcast. Whoa, wait a second. Who, who was that that did that, that sound drop? Funny you should ask, John. That, was that Anthony Cumia? <laughs> yes, it was. It's amazing with uh, the feats of technology, how uh, you can call into a platform that is subscription-based and get your name of your show said by someone you'd never think would say. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, 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 and we're tweeting on the show now, right? Well, here's the thing about... Yeah, I think about someone subscribed to me on Twitter because of that. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Well, and here's the thing about... Uh, we fucked it apart. Yeah, no. nice little cover-up. <laughs> <laughs> the cover-up <laughs> fell apart immediately. People thinking their phones are fucked up right now? Oh, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> I heard that part. <laughs> yeah, so we did, we did that part initially, and the camera wasn't on, so Ellen had to restart... Uh, he, that's what a technical genius this yeah. young Jewish man is yeah. here. Jewish. Uh, Alan, Alan <laughs> Clarkinski. Oh, no, that would be... Uh, <laughs> Clarkberg. Clarkstein. Yeah. Clarksteinberg. Yeah. There we Alan, go. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Clarkstein. Berg Nider. <laughs> yeah, right? It just keeps going. Add as many Jewish ends of last names as you can. Oh, shalom. <laughs> Can't catch me. Shalom. I'm the Jewish as fuck man. <laughs> what? That was, that was my, that was my rhyme. Uh, potential Problems Podcast. That's what this is. It's a Wednesday episode. I'm John Coyar. That's Alan Clark. We have Black Mike is the third today yeah. joining yeah. us. He's here uh, most Wednesdays. It's good to see him again. Oh, How yeah. you doing, pal? I'm good, man. You know, th- 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 things are all right. I can't things complain. Good. Yeah, it's good to see you. You're you're enjoying a brownie. I am. Brownies are good, aren't they? They're delicious. Alan made some brownies earlier, and he's been nice enough to share yeah. uh, with some here, yeah. and uh, that was very nice of him. Yeah. And uh, who doesn't like brownies? But oh, I fucked up. I didn't mix the fudge into it. I just layered it on top, and that made it cook weird. That's a man's brownie right there. Yeah. If it looked like a girl's brownie, I wouldn't have accepted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it looked too perfect, it's yeah, like no, there's got to be something wrong here. Like, tell me, just tell me. Not your eating mom these made fucking these. feminine brownies. Like if you, if you told me your mom made them. I'm okay. I'm uh, taking Yeah, because you know they're but made like, with love. Say, hey, Mike, I made these brownies. You, you want them? And they're like perfect. You I'm made like, these? Whoa, man, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Never coming over again. No, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a little weirded out, too. Yeah, yeah, especially after you tell me, Mike, make sure when you come over, put your drawers on backwards. You know, I'm like, wait, hey, wait, hey, hold up. Yeah, zippers <laughs> down. <laughs> no, zippers down. <laughs> so, um, I, hey, hey, I heard, I heard, I heard uh, you uh, invaded the iTunes world. Yeah, oh, we yes. got on there uh, with uh, the, the start of the new year. Yes, oh, yeah. and and actually, uh, let's welcome uh, our our studio audience. Uh, we'll give them the mic here. Do you want? Do you want to be on ma- mic? Is that cool? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Come on in. Oh, we got company. Well, uh, this gentleman has been at uh, quite a few of the comedy shows. Yeah, yeah. He's been yeah. very supportive. Likes to hang out with everybody afterwards. And, 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 uh, and we got we got a lot in common. He yeah. does fantasy football. I do fantasy football. And yeah. I have fantasies. Cool. None of them, including football. Maybe how football will one day die out. Oh, I don't like. You, you I don't, don't like, like the cult. I don't like the cult following behind football. People riot because their team yeah. won or lost. Well, you know what? It's weird when sense. the team loses and people riot, but it's weirder when they win and people well, riot. It's, it's not as fanatical as like soccer. Like like the guy who scored on his own team by accident and they Where beat him up. Kill him? Yeah, they, they yeah. kill him. I thought they killed him. Yeah. Yeah, they kill the refs. Oh yeah, that's. Whew. And that, that's that's fanatical. Yeah, that's fanatical. I just I just don't I don't know I can't watch like I'll be in public places with my sister like drinking and you know we're like there's always football on there so I yeah. make it look like I actually know what's going on and act like I care about watching it but no. I'm just staring at the screen no, no, because no, it's Peyton. there. I, 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 wait for I you. can't you're follow a Broncos it. fan, Peyton Manning fan the whole nine. Years. Well, in elementary school, yeah, that was the team I sided with because that's how, who my friends liked. Yeah, and, uh, well, and, and hey, I know Alan doesn't. We don't ever talk sports on this, even though I love talking sports. Me and Alan, that's not a common interest no. that we share. <laughs> but, let's talk water polo. But real how about quick, that? I just want to ask <laughs> Black Mike what he thinks about 
Peyton Manning choking yet again. I I don't know if that, if that's uh, a given. That's I had a given. I, I told every Bronco fan. I'm like, you knew he was gonna choke he's again. He's an all star. Sixteen games into the season, and then come playoffs, he turns into Achilles Smith. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it turns into Neil O'Donnell, you know? <laughs> Tyler, did you know that was going to happen? Did you know that? If, no. you, if you don't talk into the mic. I didn't know that you. was going to happen. <laughs> I wasn't surprised, though. <laughs> really? I wasn't, I, I wasn't that surprised. I was surprised by the Colts' defense. Uh, but not by how good they were. They were, they were I awesome. I was surprised they were Andrew pretty Luck didn't throw any interceptions. <laughs> That's what I was surprised about. That guy is an interception He usually throws, uh, throws one or two, yeah. No, he makes, I was he surprised when, the, when they did the play and the guy ran and like the other guy got in the way and then like that <laughs> fucking crazy shit happened and then he almost looked like he was gonna drop it but then he caught it. Oh, Des Bryant. Right. And then people got mad because I something think he happened. Got cheated. I think Des. That's got that's cheated. a level of detail that I follow football. No, on. but it's detailed enough for me to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because <laughs> I hear it at work. All the Cowboy fans at work. Where? Yeah. And it was kind of funny because the week before. Uh, the Lions fans were saying that they got exactly, screwed right. by a call. And so. neither of them were going to win the Super Bowl. No, I don't think so. Well, I had picked Dallas to go against Denver, but in hindsight, Peyton Next Manning year. beating Tom, Tom Brady in uh, New England. I don't, I don't know. Bad. Peyton Manning Super. couldn't beat Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not in the playoffs. You couldn't Alan. even beat him off. <laughs> um, the thing is, uh, you see, Tom Brady turns into Peyton Manning come Super Bowl time. That's... Wait, Tom Brady turns into Peyton yeah. Manning. Yeah, you but want, not you playoff want to know how? Peyton Manning. Playoff, a deadly Manning. dose of radiation. No, and now whenever he playoff. gets angry. Yeah, the Super Bowl is Tom Brady's kryptonite. I don't give a fuck. You think so? Yes. Well, he's had a couple bad games in the Super Bowl. I yeah, bet he's had like three straight. And it's hard to get to the Super Bowl. He's had three straight. Well, I'll say that Peyton or Eli Manning outplayed him in both those Super Bowls. Uh, well, maybe just in the last Super Eli's Bowl. Eli's opposite of Peyton. He sucks all season. Come playoff time, he's fucking Superman. Yeah. Hey, uh, so, uh, Tyler, have you... Uh, you said you subscribed to us on iTunes. That's You're not right, lying. Yeah. You really did that. No, I really did. Okay, I was probably the first one. You probably were. Yeah, That's as soon as you guys cool said now. you were on iTunes, I was like, perfect. I need that ten cents, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> we're free, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We're free. With sponsors. That's why yeah. we need sponsors, yeah. folks. If you know somebody, yeah, Ebola like date to. Com dropped off on us. For oh some yeah, reason. did you? <laughs> yeah, people don't like the idea that you can be matched with somebody with your <laughs> same style of symptoms. While you're in a quarantine. You hear about that guy who's trying to kill John Boehner? I know, right? <laughs> I love it. You hear about that? <laughs> that tried to what? He tried to, he, he, he got arrested because he wanted to kill John Boehner. No, no. Yeah, didn't you hear about this? No, what happened? Okay, so this guy worked at this country club in Cincinnati, right? And John Boehner, he, he always goes to this club. And he said, John Boehner got him fired. And the moment he got into his car, he heard voices on his radio saying, you need to kill John Boehner. Voices on his radio? Voices on his radio telling him to kill John Boehner. So then he calls John Boehner's wife. Maybe he was listening to Free Beer and Hot Wings. Oh, man. I, he, <laughs> free Beer and Hot Wings. That's yeah. good. Um, but, but he calls his wife, uh, John Boehner's wife, mm -hmm. threatens her. And, and tells her, you know how many times I could put cyanide in his wine? You know, just like that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And they came in and arrested him. I can't believe you guys didn't hear about oh, that. shit. No. 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 <laughs> just because he talked some shit. Yeah. Just because he talked some shit. That uh, is unusual. I know. Well, yeah. there's a, there was the, the cannibal cop. The uh, cannibal cop. Yeah, you don't remember the cannibal cop. I keep saying that because of cannibal corpse. Yeah. Anybody ever enjoy <laughs> cannibal corpse back in the day? I remember hey, Jack, did you me. like cannibal corpse? I, I actually was looking at a Cannibal Corpse t-shirt today. Oh, crazy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Jack We have Jack Wilkinson in, everybody. We're going to bring him to the What's mic up, in, a, in a minute or two here. He's awesome. Uh, well, uh, Cannibal Corpse, uh, they were a lovely, uh, I guess you could say a romantic band almost. <laughs> yeah, they were, yeah, it was they like the music, yeah, it was like the music you'd see in Romeo and Juliet, like on stage. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. It was, it was princess can't, music. Can't, we it was can't brought, get up that, to date, brought up to date, though. We can't get none, can we? No. Yeah. yeah Come that's on, that's sponsors. We need you guys. Cannibal <laughs> Corpse. Maybe we could get... Oh, we contacted... Uh, were you here last week when we watched... What was it? Uh, Max Zeppelin. Oh, or, Mac, Max Sabbath. Max Sabbath. It's a McDonald's-themed Black Sabbath <laughs> tribute Max band. Sabbath? No. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. <laughs> they dress up like characters from McDonald's on stage. Grimace plays bass. Uh, and he has an awesome face. Yeah, you got the Hamburglar on face. drums. You got Ronald McDonald on vocals. Oh, no. And some guy with a hamburger head and tusks playing guitar. 
That's pretty, pretty cool. amazing. Jesus. Hilarious. I bet That's you they awful. still get groupies. Oh yeah. <laughs> the one we uh they they had frying pan was a cover of Iron Man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then they had para buns for paranoid. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Max. Mike's Sabbath. our newest fan. <laughs> <laughs> I know the idea is just hilarious. I think we might just end with that again this week because it's just too. Oh. Fun. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and bring Jack over. Jack, uh, do you mind? Do you mind sliding over there, Tyler? No. Uh, to the couch, possibly. There you go. Thank you very much. Nice. Jack, uh, we'll do the introductions here. We have uh, Alan Clark. He is the engineer co-host. My name is John Cuellar. Uh, uh, This is Black Mike. He's our third. Mike Ogden, as we call him. Uh, Other people might call him the other name. But uh, Mike Ogden, yes. Ogden. (laughs) And uh, that is uh, Tyler right behind you there. Tyler, what's up? Uh, He's a, a big fan of the show. And uh, before you got here, he was doing things you would not believe to prove he was a fan of the show. Uh, yeah. yeah, things I like. Uh, <laughs> I hope it was just like naming trivia. Yeah, no, like well, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I made it sound more exotic, and it totally <laughs> was. was like, oh, like, yeah. He drove all the way over here, and he brought some beer, basically. <laughs> so cool. that's pretty cool. Uh, hey, man, how you doing today? Good. So Good. you're from where now? Uh, I live in Brooklyn. Trying to get York. a little bit closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I live in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, know? cool, man. Okay, BK. Uh, Any yeah. uh, anybody here ever been to Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When eighth, you were like, it was 12. like eighth grade. Yeah, it was eighth grade. It was a long time ago, and what it was all touristy. Sh- it was all touristy. Got shit. molested. We uh, <laughs> we went to the Hard Rock Cafe. I got food poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Sounds we like the went. Hard Rock. Yeah, and then we went to the Empire State Building that same night. Cool. And uh, I got freaked out as shit because I could feel the building moving. You know, I'm not used to that. You totally can. I yeah, mean, like, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. Especially with the Rockefeller Center, since it's like broadsided by the wind, it's just fucking. You could feel it a lot more in there. But they had a cool light show in the elevator. Yeah, have you seen the light show on top of it now? They yeah, the, like every the Nintendo night. room where you yeah. walk around and like there's little things correlating to your spot everywhere. It's fucking weird. I, I love like uh, like visual like um, stuff that like corresponds with movement. Yeah, I think they just do that to make sure like. We have to have equal weight distribution just so, like, the entire building doesn't collapse because of... How fucking high are we right now? 89 <laughs> stories. This is ridiculous. It's oh, I thought you were meaning something else. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, totally. I was so... Uh, Jeez, don't announce it, Alan. Holy cow. Ixnay on the I hate. Shh. No, I'm terrified of heights. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's terrible. So you're really high that day. Sure. In 12th grade. Yeah. I 12th grade? Heights. I'm with you, Alan. <laughs> when you I were 12. Heights. Can't stand them. Yeah. Can't stand them. Everyone's was like, "Why'd you go to the Air Force?" <laughs> you were in the Air Force? Yeah, I was in the Air Force. Yeah, I didn't fly. I lie. <laughs> I lie all the time. Yeah, I was a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in the Air Force if you don't fly? I was a photographer. That is, sounds like the best Air Force gig. It's the it was the best job in the world, yeah. man. You just <laughs> like, you got to travel. Oh yeah, and take pictures. And once you go to combat photography, you get to travel a lot. Cool. Yeah, but uh. Like, while I was stationed here, that's how I got out here. And that's all I did was, you know, uh, award ceremonies, commander's calls. And every once in a while, let us go up in, like, the helicopters and strap us into the Aerial planes. stuff? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was dope. That is sick. I just found some of my stuff, too, man. I might have to put it up. I feel like uh, like New Mexico is, like, the best place to be for, like, bases and things like that. As yeah, far as, yeah. like... Because we're going right in the middle of the city. We and then do. there's Los Alamos and a couple other spots. And yeah, yeah like there's the hidden and one. Stuff. The hidden one in the oh, mountains. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got like three bases out here. Yeah, that we yeah. know of. That we yeah, that we know of. What about Sounds Dulce? like a conspiracy, Alan. Do you know where Area Fifty Nine is? <laughs> I, I, I was Brooklyn now, there. though, man. I have see. I, I haven't been to Brooklyn in probably about twenty years. Really? So I know it's changed. I keep hearing it's changed. It's definitely changed in twenty years. I mean, it's changed in five years since I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, it's become like more like me, pretty much. No nice. yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Probably a bad thing for a lot of people. <laughs> it's but, a probably uh, bad thing. <laughs> a better thing for me, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's definitely become like really gentrified. Uh, it was probably when I was there. My cousin used to live there like a long time ago, and she was like one of the first people to live in like uh, the lofts, like right on the water. Oh, nice. And then I lived on her couch for a while. And so then, why'd you leave that gig, man? <laughs> right. And then. Uh, 
and then I moved to my own place, and then I've just been like moving further and further, like away from like the gentrified front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, is there a reason for that? <laughs> yeah, it costs. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah cost. It's cost. It has to be cost, man. <laughs> like, yeah. Costing like street cred because like the further out you go, like the cooler. The, yeah, the more the hardcore you automatically more, right? become yeah. for showing yeah. your face. The closer, <laughs> in, the closer in, it's like they all, almost don't even consider you're from Brooklyn, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, take that shit back to New Jersey. Right? Well, like the first stop is like all models and like uh, rich producers and stuff See, now. In was, my opinion, I don't even really know what it was they like are. that. They back look like models day, and rich producers. Like, Back in the eighties, man. Yeah, all that shit was like Crackville, man. Who Times were, Square, that was worse. Like it was it was it was bad. It's like uh my brother was born in uh he was raised in Brooklyn. My other brother grew up in the Bronx. So okay. I, I, you know, we I used to always stay in the Bronx, you know, in the oh, you know, the projects out there. You know, just lived on scary shit I've ever seen. That was like nine years old, right? So first my uncle lived on the twentieth floor, right, of the projects. You get in the elevator, smells like piss and Everything else, right? You almost don't yeah, twenty touch floors. The that's a long elevator buttons, ride. Right? But that—that's only the, the first part. So once you get to the top floor, we roll out. You know, we're coming around the corner. The neighbors, they're Jamaicans, and there's like all these Jamaican symbols, and fucking chicken legs and chicken heads just hanging from the door. Nice. No, 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 not after you just watch Mark for Death. You know, you're like, you're, you're nervous, right? You know, you know, it's like, I seen someone throw a bowling ball out the window. Just for no reason? They just, I guess they didn't want it anymore. You know, they were, they were going for a, space. They were going you for know? a turkey. <laughs> Had to make room. But one thing I, I do miss about New York are the incinerators. Incinerators? Yes, they have incinerators. Like you know? in the house? Oh, uh, it's right, like no. outside. Oh. You gotta go like you know in the hallway and shit. Just burn your trash. You just, like, like they have a yeah, like they, a they have a shoot shoot usually, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That seems safe. It seems <laughs> fucking easy. <You're> burning, <laughs> throw your trash down this metal chute that's in a building made in the 1800s, roughly. Well, well could, you, could you imagine taking your trash down every day? That would suck. In like December. I'm on the th- I'm on the third floor and I wait every four days. <laughs> third floor? Nah. In the eighties, you don't want to be on the low floors. No. Oh. That that's where the dope dealing goes on. <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to be on the low floors unless you're sleeping on the floor. You know, it's, <laughs> you don't want to do it. You want you want to say hi. <laughs> You know, we don't aim high. <laughs> but does, isn't it a pain in the ass to move if you're if you're up higher? You ain't, like move, you're you're up nobody, you ain't moving knows. unless your son play basketball or if he can rap. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't moving. No. <laughs> that's, that's where you live. That's it. <laughs> you know, I still got family on that 20th floor. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, where what what made you uh, decide to get into comedy? Like what what was it that like? What are some of your major inf- who are some of your major influences or what are the reasons? Oh man, what, what, what's how like long the ago? yeah? How long have you been doing comedy for? I guess I've been doing it. It's probably I moved to New York to do comedy, and that was like four and a half years ago. Okay, had Ta- you already been doing comedy at that point, or I, I did like one set one time in college and okay. like and my first set ever was at like a college like tournament like a stand up tournament oh nice yeah and like that was the first time I ever was on stage that's a good, and I got like a good a, little dose of a uh, yeah I got like judged by three like professional comedians and it was just like oh this is the first time I was ever up ever yeah so it was like I just it was like a heartbreaking moment like it's like oh just like ripped apart it didn't go well well it wasn't like okay it yeah. was just like it didn't go great i mean yeah it just the like, fact that you're being judged by like yeah. people who are in the business and right. you're like fuck this is my first time why should there be this yeah. much pressure and like what it was i think they were just like why are you in a competition it was like well because not a lot of people signed up for it that's why it was just, <laughs> they said I, they needed heads they really, i'm yeah. a seat filler yeah it was like, it's that. like then that gets them laughing they're like you have a career it's like wait what I wasn't even lying or anything. <laughs> yeah. Truth. How, how long was the set that they asked you to do? Try and... Uh, try and yeah, the set was probably okay. like... Uh, I think it was five minutes. You got, I think it's actually online. It got filmed. Oh, is it? You yeah. can uh, you can actually pull that off if you want. You can use it as a free Hell. mic. It's up to yeah. you. Yeah, Beastie it's kind Boys. Of a pain in the ass. Beastie oh, Boys that feels natural. Yeah, it feels there good, right? Go. There you go. Uh, so your first set, how long did it have to be? It was like two uh, minutes? I think it was like four minutes. Okay. Cool. Four or five, yeah. And you said it, it did not kind of go well. It's the first set. Very well, few of them go like, well. It was just like I uh, 
I always liked like hardcore comedians more, yeah. and so like I wanted to be like an aggressive like I tell the fucking truth. Hey, way like, to go on your like, first time! <laughs> like, right. It's like I don't fuck around. And, like I don't I don't hold back and like Dude, I don't censor like, myself. So and they were cool. like, I'm you have to say the shit. Yeah, yeah. You can't say or scare. Right. I'm and gonna be me. Like, I'm this gonna is be really me. like immature. Yeah, a while you just like don't know anything about life yet. Do a while you? back, we <laughs> saw a comedian who uh, just started, and he was he thought he was gonna be breakthrough by using a chair and being a sit down comedian. But all he did is play an Avenged Sevenfold song and act like he was driving and then take a hit out of a weed pipe in the middle of a fucking building. Oh, you're still in that dude. St- I fucking hate that <laughs> guy. Alan has annoying. a hard on for that dude. <laughs> it was annoying. It that guy's is. already. You don't just fucking he's smoke persistent. weed inside. That I guy see him at every open mic. No dude. way. That dude? Yes. Uh, no, not like, that guy. It's a different guy. Okay. It's a different yeah. dude. Okay. Yeah. He had a beard or some shit. Yeah. Right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tell us about your very first, like, what well, your first real time, not the contest. What was the first time after that? Like, how did you go? Like, where was it? And, like, what gave you the balls to go? Did you drink a lot? Like, how did that start out? Well, so then I moved in. I was like, I liked, I liked doing it because I like, I just like it. I mm. like stand up is something I've always just loved and I love comedy and all of that. So then I was like, I'm moving to New York to do this. And I also like work in television entertainment and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm going to do that anyway. Yeah. And I want to do comedy. And so when you move to New York, like you just, you just go on like the open mic website, bad Slava, and you mm-hmm. just start going to all of them. Okay. But is there usually a lot of people signed up for those. It, it's really hit or miss. Uh, sometimes there's like a lot of people. Sometimes there's like nobody. What's the most you've you've seen? But well, the, like the first one I think I went to was like there was like a midnight mic at like this Sweet. comedy club, and there was like it was called it's called the Pit uh-huh. People's Improv Theater. And I'm gonna I'm gonna guess right here there was I'm gonna guess twenty thousand people there signed up for open mic. <laughs> there was there really was like sixty. Oh, oh okay. god. Damn. Yeah, I and mean, they and they only give you like two minutes. And it's that it's like that was like four or five years ago, and a lot of the people who were there are now like they have their own like uh, Mike. thirty minute specials on oh, Comedy wow. Central and shit, and like it was like much more like a like a scene, and yeah. so like to be like you only get two minutes, and that's basically and, like you get announced, it's like ten seconds down the steps just to get on stage, yeah. And then you have basically like one joke. You, you have like one sure or two on jokes. Point, yeah. yeah. There's no like get it warming the crowd up to you. It's like, and so it's just like you just eat it because nobody knows who you are. And nobody cares. Exactly. Or like you tell one joke and they're like, okay, this this guy may be. <laughs> you gotta jump on stage and try to punch him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so the first place you were you you did uh, stand up really was at the the place called the Pit. Yeah, that would have been like my first set. But then you would have, uh, I would like you just go every night. And you can do like three or three or four mics in a night if you're like really pushing it. Mm-hmm. Nice. And there was a while where I was like really pushing it, and then like I I, uh, I started traveling a lot for work, and so and that's what I'm doing now. And so I backed off a lot, and then I quit that job. And if you it depends on how your job works. I mean, if you if you don't have a job, like if you have a job that starts at like seven a.m. and you get off by three, you can start hitting mics at like four, and then you can do them all night. So you can do like six mics in a night, and there's people who like just go mic to mic to yeah, mic to yeah. mic, and they just like build muscle. And that's just, that's fucking cool, though, man. That, that is awesome. It's a grind, though. How long I mean, did you do that for? Like just going out to hitting as many open mics as you could. Probably like the first year I lived there, I did mm. that, and then I was on the road working for uh, this show for like almost two years, and then I quit that, and then I was, like, hitting, like, the grind, like, the hard grind for, like, three months, probably, Mm -hmm. and that was, like, and then I was, like, I gotta get a job, like, I gotta get, like, a better job. I know that feeling, man. Yeah. And then when you get the job, you're just sitting in that job, just like, this is not what I want to do. Yeah, that's (laughs) exactly it. It was, like, and then, and then it was, like, man, like, this is really cutting into, like, my comedy time. Exactly, right? It's, like, this is, it was not supposed to. I know so, that feeling, man. Yeah, have you ever checked out like rooftop comedy out there? That was the that was the comedy competition that I first did. It was, the, was it? it was like the rooftop college, like yeah, that rooftop man. Yeah, it's been been pretty big out there, man. You can you can probably see on like rooftop dot com like my first set yeah? ever. Yeah, it's no, at, like, it's just like <laughs> I'm setting and, up on rooftop, I'm and I, I, and I like I like really milk every time. I'm like right. <laughs> it's just like, like reaction no. needed. Yeah, it was like <laughs> come on. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh right there, and I could just well, I could just see one of the face judge, judge's face just like, no, yeah, I, no. I, I, I've had that uh. look. Um, 
Kathleen, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kathy, uh, Kathleen Madigan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, she dissed the hell out of me. Oh, man, to the point Wait, where... Wait, isn't that Ralphie Mae's wife? Is it? I think so. Ugh, someone would marry that, that Ralphie redhead? May? What the is fuck is that about? <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, she's the Irish one, right? Jesus. Yeah. Okay, I mean, never mind. Wrong person. She yeah. she tore me apart, man. I, I went to the last comic stand. This probably was like maybe seven, eight years ago, right? So, like, I'm, I'm pretty cocky, right? Because, you know. Well, I, we know. No, 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 no. John knows. <laughs> no. At, at this point, wait, I so was. You were Mikey May's cocky. Yeah, I was I was <laughs> ten times that. Wearing man. suits I was, at an open mic. I, was just, I didn't go that far, but. <laughs> I yeah, that's just not me though. You know, yeah. people know me. You know, I'm just always gonna do me, no matter what. It's like you know, it's like we've been talking about that too. Like you know, me, Luis, and, and Mikey, and everything. You know about you know, it's like you know, dressing for the part. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, you know, my 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 theory is when I go on stage, I want to give you me exactly. So when I go on stage, I'm gonna be me. Yeah. Now I understand where they're coming from. It does hurt opportunities too, because there's going to be a time where there's going to be someone who's sitting in there and say, "Hey, man, you know this kid might have some potential, but problems podcast. Yeah, he, he's, he's not. He's uh, not. Maybe he's not taking it seriously. Maybe they'll, they'll look at it like that. You know, maybe why? Because you're not wearing a suit. Exactly. Well, that's yeah, some old like school a, bullshit too. Because I got a hoodie. You know, because Yo, that's a hoodie is the look. You know, I I love hoodies. I've been rocking hoodies since I was twelve, man. You see me? I always have yeah. a hoodie. Today is rare. I don't have my fucking hoodie. It's you got a freestyle about hoodies? Yeah, I love hoodies, man. This is my second day at the job. That's why so I don't have my hoodie. <laughs> you know, I started a new job, so I'm I got a. You know, church oh, you nice. Down, you know? No more of the, uh, the, can I help you when I don't want to? No, stuff? same same job, different uh, place. Uh, That's, uh, same what do you do? Job. Uh, I work at uh, uh, T-Mobile now. I almost said Sprint. But I work at the call center. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I sit there and, you know, I, I, I talk to people who bitch, basically. Yeah, crowd work. Um, yeah. <laughs> just working crowd work. I, I work a lot of shit on customers. Sometimes I get material from customers, man. Yeah. You know? It's like you make up that thing where it's like, all right, let me just process this. And while that's waiting, you know, did you hear about that scam that happened the other day? Oh, like, just some, start it's launching like, it's into crazy because, like, it depends what type of customer and where they're calling from. You yeah. Because I've been all over, so I know a lot. Like, if I get someone that calls from, like, uh, D.C., like, if I get, like, a black chick from D.C., she's like, what's going on with my sprint bill? I'm like... Oh, what? What, you need your phone up? Some so you go out, go-go <laughs> dancing? You need to go Wait, go-go you, dancing? You don't have like a monotone <laughs> voice that you just do every time? For the last two weeks I did because I was checked the fuck out. <laughs> I was like, thank you for did you get a bunch spring. of those new Oh, yeah, didn't they, didn't they send you home to really think about if you wanted to come back? He did one day. Shit? What? My, my boss did because, oh, man, see, I could talk about this shit too. So my boss, he, he looks like... Um, like a uh, like Dana Carvey almost, <laughs> I swear to God, and uh, but he was talking shit to me. He's always like trying to point in your face and shit. Oh, that's that's a good way to boss and people. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just went straight like hood on him, man. I'm like, yo, hold up, dog. I even called him dog. I was like, hold nice. up, dog. You ain't gonna be pointing at my face, man. I tell you what, you gonna stop that right now? He's like, no, no, I'm in control. I'm like, you ain't in control of me, motherfucker. And just like that. And then everyone just came up, world star. <laughs> <laughs> Filming wrong with, you know, oh, man. mode. Yeah, so he's like, and he got scared, oh, man. Cause shit, I'm, really, I'm really calm. You know, John, you know, yeah. I'm really just real chill dude, right? And when I snap like that, when you see someone real nice just go crazy, yeah. you're like, he was like, it's like especially scary. Maybe you should just go home. Just go home for the day. I'm, we're not firing you. We're not firing you. We're giving you the option we're to quit, but we're not firing you. you. We're <laughs> going to pay you to go home. Went home, chilled, played some video games. But, like, that last day, man, it's like the last two weeks, I was just like, check the fuck out, man. I was giving customers anything they wanted. If you had Sprint and you got me four weeks ago, you got everything you wanted. Everything. <laughs> just hand it over, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yep, free iPhone, promise to customer. Dude, if it's in the notes, it's solid. <laughs> is Wait, that is true? That, is yeah, that, is true, that how it works? Like, can I really, like, warm somebody up and then they'll be like, all uh, right. They, uh, yeah, if they put something in those notes... Wait, oh, there's like notes, a wait. There's like a note dictate. system. Yeah, those uh, notes. Now, if it's outrageous, they ain't gonna. You know, if like I promise customer one million dollar credit. I, I promise you know, them their own cell phone. Did somebody tower. like review? Exactly right. <laughs> well, somebody somebody say, like reviews that, and they're just like, oh, okay. Well, this is what you gotta do. You gotta go executive escalation. 
You have to say, I need to talk to your boss's boss's boss. Oh, shit. You don't even have I'm right staying the on the phone until I talk to your boss's boss's boss. I'm not hanging up. And then you so just that, be quiet. Is that, is that, that's like not even in the building, right? Sometimes that, you get high enough in the building. So like if you want like a free is that, is that, iPhone. Is that like we're going to have to transfer you to like cat? Well, sometimes they'll call back. Some people even get to talk to the CEO. Two months, no while. bill. Shit yeah. like that. I, I had an executive escalation and they got mad at me too because... It was last. It was like may I, it was at the time when I knew I was going to quit. Yeah. So I'm like already checking out, you know, and um, the guy was talking shit to me, and I forgot what I said to him, but I didn't even try to offer him to like stay with Sprint. He's like, I just need to cancel, I cancel the whole account. I'm like, all right, fine. Your final bill is going to be one thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. Is there anything else I can help you out? With? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. They were like, what the fuck? You didn't even try to save them. <laughs> That's your job. That's your department. You are in saves. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. I mean, it's like, yeah, but you know, PlayStation games don't always save properly yeah, either. Exactly, man. I was, oh, man. And then, like, like sometimes I'll talk to, like, black people and, like, totally break my character. You know? Because, like, this is how I open up calls. I'm like, hi, thank you for calling Sprint. My name's Mike. How can I help you out today? Yeah, dog. Yo, yo, yo. This shit's for gazy. I'm like, yo, man, dog. Hey. <laughs> I feel you. You know, yeah, I'll be talking like, you know, like sometimes I'll slip up. I'll say like, you know, nigga, I'll say shit, <laughs> motherfucker. And they'll ask they'll check me. They'll be like, dude, dude, dude. You could be saying that? <laughs> like, oh snap. Oh, you're right. You know, it's like but the thing is if you stretch a call out to like thirty minutes, they they won't review it. Yeah. And I'll just be honest at that point. Like, hey, man, I got $15 credit for you if you can stay on the line for about 22 more minutes. You it's know? like the FDI yeah, wire tap. Down. Yeah, just yeah. put the phone like, down. Go do what you was doing. You know? <laughs> yeah, is your time worth more than $15 for about less than half an exactly. hour, sir? I'll give him everything I got, <laughs> man. I said, I got $50 credit for the next two months right now. I, but I need you to stay on the phone for 22 minutes because I don't hit accept. Yeah. Until 22 minutes, you know? Hey Jack, you have any uh, any fucked up stories like that? Like where you just like like Mikey says, you just get tired of your fucking job, you or you to, just mail it in. Travel. Anything, even like just a meeting meaningless job. Like maybe oh, like you worked something that was just a short term job. You knew you weren't going to keep did it. Did you ever have that Haunted job house. where you just quit? <laughs> you thought about comedy so much. You're like, man, fuck this, I quit. Yeah, I mean, I I've been working in restaurants for like eight years. Oh, you had? Come on, give us a good I restaurant like a good story. One, Come yeah. on, man. I've had. Dipped your balls uh, more in than one tomato bisque. <laughs> I've never like spit in anyone's food or anything like no, that. No, that's yeah. Very <laughs> few people will do yeah, that. Yeah, I would. But like, I've dropped food and just put it, picked it back. Like I'm not gonna recook that. Exactly. <laughs> that's definitely gone on. But I've more than once. I would say like three times, three different restaurants. I've literally just quit. Where it's just like I either found out about another job, or like I just like was done. Where I just like put the knife down and just left. <laughs> Like, so you were holding them them at knife point? Yeah, basically. I was just like, <laughs> okay. Fuck. So, like, uh, did you ever just not show up to a job again and just be all fucked? Yeah, I've done that too. Back? I've which done which that place? Too. These are places. The also other kitchens. Some in New York. Some in. I did that in Detroit. <laughs> That's some dangerous shit to I do. Did that in Detroit. in Detroit. It was real shitty. Holy fuck! What were you doing in Detroit? I was. I was like a. Uh, I was a prep cook at a steakhouse. So I spent Detroit like has steakhouses. <laughs> yeah, what the this fuck? is like a, yeah. Holy this shit. is like a legit maybe steakhouse. a steak nugget house. <laughs> it was actually like a really sick place, and it was a nice place. Really nice, and so I was like, but I was like, I was like cutting like breaking chickens apart all day, or like cutting up. Oh, like, prep cook is where it's at, though. Pre- man. Right, you just hang out in a basement and just like cut things apart, destroy things. And then my friends, <laughs> I like at your own pace, you know. Literally, my friends are like, "We got a beach house. Do you want to like come down for like the rest of the summer?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm on my way." And I just never went back. Sweet, that's a, that's a good reason. <laughs> and I told them, that's I, one I, hell of a good reason. Yeah, the, yeah. you should have took some steaks. <laughs> I, yeah. I should have like, taken. I'm them. on my way. I got some food. <laughs> they must have been like, "What the f-? <laughs> phone calls?" And then one day, I like, call, I was like, "All right, I got it. I guess I had to like." I guess I had to like close this, and I was just like, "I'm sorry." Like some shit went down with my family. <laughs> like, this really sad my story. I don't even know why. I didn't even need to be. I made up like a big story for no reason. They probably would just been like, "Just say you quit. You don't have to tell us." Like, 
don't get into it. Yeah, we're not going to fact check you with the FBI. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't want to like have any like concern for you, so we check up on you again in a couple months to make sure everything's so going well. We don't, too far. Yeah, we, like, we yeah. don't want the personal obligation that yeah. you're putting on us right don't now. Don't put any investing. Like, yeah, we don't want to invest like our emotional <laughs> stake in you. Come Your on. story was just going like outside the and box. Like, like, well, the 13 click. midgets came, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I had to fight them, you know? <laughs> so that took time. You know? Gosh, <laughs> red light out the red light, you know? <laughs> So tell us uh, about the comedy scene uh, out where you frequent. Like, where's the place, the spot that you do now? You were running a show for a while, right? I was running a show at Legion Bar. What? Yeah. Uh, so bar show? Uh, yeah, bar you... shows are big in New York. Okay, yeah. yeah. It, it seems like that's kind of like the new thing. Like, um, even, like, especially in our scene, there's yeah. there's not really a comedy club. There's a casino. It's more of a professional setting for, like, mm-hmm. circuit comics. Uh, some of our uh, local comics have done that, and uh, that's been a great opportunity. They get to open or they get to like middle? They get to, um, I would say open, although I think AJ uh, has middled. Even uh, still, even though like that's middling is moving up from like just opening, middling just sounds like it's a really menial thing to do. Yeah, it does. Why are you middling? It's, uh, I, yeah. Even though, I mean, like, yeah, hey, I know. someone's I like, hey, yeah. uh, really you, good. Yeah. <laughs> you can middle for uh, fucking Ron White and fucking so and so. Like, oh, yeah, okay. middling is fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> if it would be for someone cool. Um, See, that, I'm always sort of jealous of, like, the uh, the small, like, city comedy scene because, like, you guys have, like, you get to do that when, like, uh, someone, you can middle for Ron White. Shit, and, like, uh, oh, if it was. Well, establish, actually, like, your scene, you build it yourselves, and you had, like, you're like the mic last night was like I mean that's like the size of a lot of shows in New York. Oh okay, well especially and, bar shows. And and it's interesting that you point that out because that's one of the big things about uh, our little Albuquerque comedy scene is there was a um, a, a club here called Laughs yeah. and that's where me and Mikey uh, yeah. kind of started out uh, and they closed about like six years ago right about six seven years six yeah. or seven years ago and since then. Uh, I remember one night, me and a couple of, of other comics were sitting around. And we were like, fuck, man, it would be nice just to have a place to do comedy. And from that little meeting grew like a bunch of open mics. And then over yeah. the years, more got added. And then over the, throughout the years, uh, a couple of those people that went to the open mic started pulling in their own professional shows yeah. and bringing in uh, comics that, you know, from the surround- surrounding areas. And that's been really cool. That's cool. And Just as last year, there's been quite a few open mics that have popped up. and Yeah, yeah some shows. really good ones. Back Alley is good. Back Alley is always Nexus. good. Um, Nexus is good. Nexus is good. A uh, Blackbird's yeah. a good late night one to go and just, you know, pretty much say whatever you want if your name is Nicky Munoz. Uh, and <laughs> oh, no, what happened? <laughs> no, just kidding. It wasn't there last night. <laughs> Moon. But um, and then you you bring up the uh, opening for other comics thing uh, or the middling uh, and uh, like uh, Black Mike got to open for uh, Stan Hope along with a couple of other comics. Yo, that's and, sick. Like Black Mike killed it. Uh, so everybody like all those people that came out to see Stan Hope and the other comics and they saw the local scene kill kill it. Well, the next time they see Black Mike doing a show, they're going to come out and see yeah. other comics. You're building your fan base that have that's not. Awesome. What show know, was and, that? Where was that? It was here? Yeah, it was here uh, downtown at uh, Launchpad. Cool. It was, uh, it was a good show, man. You, know, you did a good seven, ten minutes, something like that? Yeah, like 12, yeah. yeah okay, nice. I was kind of nervous about it because, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to touch the crowd like that. Yeah. You know, but uh, now nah, they ate it up, though. They ate it up. Cool. Yeah. It was good. So, I mean, you know, he gave it was, some good yeah. compliments, man. Yeah? Yeah, it was really good ones. And, what, what was he wearing? Was he wearing, like, a crazy suit? Yes, he was. He was. Yeah, and yeah. afterwards, we got to party with him. Yeah, we got to hang out with it him. It was fucking oh, awesome. He hung out. He uh, he wouldn't pose for pictures. Very cool thing. He would be like, bah, bah, fuck posing. Just fucking act natural. Just act like we're talking. You Just know, talk. I get those. But John too. couldn't he talk like, to him because he, he was do... too nervous. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I, I, I do crowd work a lot, you know, because I'm lazy at writing material or because <laughs> I'm good at it, you depending on who you ask. Him, but uh, that, that, that no, was just, not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no, it was it was fucking awesome. Yeah, uh, Black Mike because he killed it on stage. He was like, you know, he's more comfortable talking to him because he had. And I felt like a piece of shit. This showed up at the fucking after party. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah he okay. didn't show great show. show. <laughs> he didn't even show up to the actual show. It's not that, man. I treat every celebrity like that. I treat them like regular people. Man. Oh yeah, dude. It's like, yeah. That's why they they they, yeah. they they're just real cool with me. Like, I used to work at an AT and T store, right? 
And you ever heard of a guy named Paul Ben Victor? No. He's an actor, right? And he was playing in this show called uh, In Plain Sight, you know? Okay. Uh, he was in that movie Grudge Match. Have you seen Grudge Match? No. He was a one Oh, of the wait, motors. with the... Yeah, he was the Italian Stallone guy. Stallone and... Uh, Is yeah. he the one who was like, yo, throw in the towel? Like, he yeah. Can, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I like um, that guy. That's his name? Yeah. Okay, I'm Paul happy. Paul Victor. So he I'm comes into the that. AT&T store, right? I, I recognize him from an old, old school movie anyway, right? And I'm like... All right, whatever. Well, if he wants help, he'll come up to me, right? And then everyone else in the store recognized him. They're all asking for autographs. I'm like, all right, dude, what, what do you need? What, what, what plan are you on? I don't know. <laughs> you know, like just talking to him like a regular customer, like a regular person. You know, he's like, well, well, you know, you, you seem to know, know your shit, man. Wait, what are you doing? How about we uh, go over to Village Inn? Let's have some lunch. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Really? Yeah, so I go there, we're having lunch, we're talking shit, and, um, you know, he's asking what I do and everything, you know, and yeah, I do some comedy. Actually, he's actually giving me a joke. Really? Yeah, when he when he went back to L.A., he's just calling me, like, just random times, just while he's on the, you know, the 405, or just give me a call, he'll be like, hey, like Mike, hey, 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 made me laugh, made me laugh, what you got? What new shit you got? You know, and That's I, it. I got, like, a matter of fact, it's my, I got this joke about being poor, being broke. <clears throat> And I talk about how you can identify the the brokest person in the room. How you can identify when someone's broke. And the thing is, when you hear change drop, and you're the only motherfucker to react, you're broke as shit. Or you're <laughs> Jewish, you know. And <laughs> Paul and Victor, he gave me he gave me the add on to that joke. He was like, "You know what you should say, right? You should say something like, I know, because I heard someone drop sixty seven cents, you know, and uh." You know, someone tried to correct me and say it was 75. I said, no, 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 no. It's 67. I heard two pennies. Pennies make F sharps. Ding. And he gave Whoa. me that. You know? <laughs> That's a good, yeah. Like, you heard Very me specifics. do that joke before. Yeah, Paul and Victor gave me that. But I just treat him like a normal person. Even Rom, you know, Romney, my homeboy Romney, Malco. Mitt Romney? N- yeah. 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 Mitt Romney? Romney? Holy shit. Romney, <laughs> Malco. <laughs> I'll, I'll punch him in the face. <laughs> Take doodle and rub it all over his face. I, I just want to say <laughs> Angora. Real. Angora says Black Mike is awesome. Yes, she does. You are lying. Angora, I- man. She has a boyfriend now, right? Yeah. She does have a boyfriend. He has a very powerful Greek beard. Yeah. Is what he has. He has a very yeah. terroristic looking beard. <laughs> <laughs> he has a very ISIS y type beard going on there. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Taliban y. It's kind of Taliban y. <laughs> hey, so Jack, getting back to like who are the, some of the people that you run with? Like here in Albuquerque, we have kind of like a core group. Even the people that we don't hang, hang out with, the guys that show up to the open mics time in and time out yeah. eventually kind of like end up being a part of the scene even if we don't hang on a personal level. You know level. how we judge that? When they come on this show. Um, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> douche. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, the scene, I mean, the amount of people doing stand-up in New York is like I mad. bet. Somebody just put out a joking list of the top 1,000 comics. <laughs> yeah. I think and I was I like, oh, that. yeah, yeah. Like, that's just, I, I was like, so I was like, yeah, yep. These are all... <laughs> These are these all good people ones. who are in this city. Names you've know, never I, heard. If they're not even—they weren't even fake names. It's like, yeah, these are all real people. <laughs> there's, there's a thousand real people. Doing do you stuff. have? Do you have like a little group or or uh, some people you write with, or maybe some people, just some friends in comedy out there that you kind of like that or are your yeah. boys? I mean, my 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 co-host is Morgan Miller. Co-host for, for the show uh, for my old show. Okay, yeah, my and my new co-host for this new show I'm starting. January. Morgan Miller is that a male or female name? Female. Okay, yeah. I'm interested. More <laughs> yeah, interested. Yeah. She's great. You'll see. She's gonna be huge. Okay. You'll see her. Does she have an eating disorder or something? No, no. Oh no, she'll just like celebrity wise or celebrity, success. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she uh, <laughs> yeah. Literal. She tours with the UCB. The UCB. Oh, is cool, like a big, cool. Yes, definitely. Like a big thing there, yeah. I, I did a lot of. Uh, I did all the classes and all that stuff. How did you like that? Tell us about that a little bit. Hmm. I feel like there's like a little bit of like weird animosity sometimes between like stand ups and, and improv, improv people. A little bit. That's a thing that's kind of like. I don't know if it's ever been pointed out as much as it has now and maybe it's because yeah. there's a lot more in the out in the way of that art form i think it's because you know they think they're more talented than stand-ups and stand-ups think they're more talented than improv i think that's what it boils stand-ups down to. are you know okay. improv well, I, think, I think it's like they're, they're hard, all competing man. for like the same stage time they're yeah, comp- like if you want to see comedy like you're like you're like I'm gonna go. I want to laugh tonight, yeah. and like the stand, you're like the improv people and the standard people are competing for like the same like laugh. I like, just, I not. just, I just don't like how the improv people always have to agree with the scenario. 
Yeah. Yeah, one, and how about well, no? That's, that's retarded. Yeah. How about well, that? the thing is, man, well, you're supposed to have. Alan conflict. is not a great you improv. Have, no. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not. No, and what? Yeah. Let's, you don't have any comments. No, <laughs> fuck dead. you. Let's do some Aunt. improv. Let's do some improv. And your fucking right. improv uh, pants and no Mike, shoes. Mike, give us a situation. A t- uh, yeah, we can't play that one. Um, <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Part of a say, word, and he gives up on it. No, no, no! I was gonna say we, we can play like interrogation. Okay. You know, but yeah. someone's gonna have to step out the room. Oh fuck! We don't have time for that. Exactly. I just said, Give me a scenario. Um, you're in line at a uh, water slide park. All right. Who's uh, who's the one checking tickets? Alcoholic. So, John? (laughs) Hey, I quit drinking for a while. (laughs) For a while. (laughs) Bring back some demons. Hi, sir. Here's my ticket. Well, well. I want to see your manager. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's good improv. (laughs) That's the the note from a coach would be like, you got to let that moment breathe a little bit. (laughs) Just let it breathe. I thought that was brilliant. So what's times. what's your opinion of, on that whole thing? Like, uh, I mean, <laughs> why do you think it's uh, like that's coming out more, or why do you think that's a thing? Is it something that's always been there? Do you think, or I think it's always you? been there, but I think it's like um, comedy's getting so much bigger and scrutinized more that like people are, like picking apart little parts of it all the time. So like every time like some little weird thing happens on stage. Everyone picks it apart, and I think it's the yeah. same breakdown with like improv and stand up. So it's like, uh, and then you almost end up being like, you, it's like really polarizing. So you have to like pick a team that you're on. Yeah. You're either, like a stand up or an improver. And even though like I like, I did both for a while. It's like, but now I'm more committed to like the stand up. Which do you feel you were more successful, at? or which was more challenging? Yeah, you know, which one was more rewarding for you? I guess stand up. I think stand up is more rewarding. Why? Because why? it's you. It's yeah. just you up there, and like you live and die by yourself. Um, that being said, like you, you, I mean, it's sort of a selfish thing, really. Like when you're on an improv team, yeah. like you have to like be concerned with everything yeah. everyone else that's going on, and like set people up. You have to depend on them to hit. You mm-hmm. know, like I started in stand uh, in uh, improv in Alabama. No less, right? Whoa. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty rough, but it was, it was, it was. There's never that type of animosity because we were probably the only ones doing it first, you know. And then like one time we didn't have enough players, and, and this is how I started stand up. They're like, well, "Why don't y'all just do some stand up?" You know, we're like, "All right, fuck it," you know. So yeah, just went off the cusp for like five, six minutes, you know, and it was probably crappy. I don't remember the set, but um, but they liked it, you know. And then from there, I moved out here. And there was really no improv, really, too much. I think they yeah. had, like, um, downtown, what was it called? You remember that improv spot downtown, John, they used to have? Gorilla Tango. Gorilla Tango, yeah. that's what it was. <laughs> Gorilla Tango. Yeah, they yeah. they closed, like, right after I got back. and then It uh, was a theater. Yeah. 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 Called Gorilla Tango. Yeah, and then I, after that, I just started going down to uh, Laughs, and that's where I met Johnny, man. Them, but okay. improv is fucking hard, man. Yeah, it can be really hard, and it can be, like, when you see good improv, you're like, damn, that was good. That is good. It's good. That was good. And then, like, to know... To know what it takes to be good, and then I, for me, what what started happening was like, I like knew what it took to be good, but I kept like failing. It's yeah. like I know what good can be, and I've done good before, but I can't. I just like. But how much does that improv like, help you with your stand up? As far as like when you're acting out characters on stage. Oh yeah, like that. I think it's, it's definitely more like a or with you a heckler. holding it back with a heckler. Dealing with a heckler. heckler. Yep. You almost embrace a heckler because you're like yes, yes, like, yes and exactly <laughs> how to, yeah. yeah. Let me let yeah let me destroy this guy real quick. Maybe maybe you know what's on the the greatest feeling when you have a heckler when you get them upset and they want to fight you. That's when I feel like I won. You know, everyone's laughing at them. Like, Man, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, Black Mike. What's up, Black Mike? Stop to me then. <laughs> Wait, do you, is your stage name Black Mike? You go yeah. on as Black Mike? Okay. Yeah. I was like, man, everyone knows, even the hecklers know his <laughs> nickname. Like, wow. I was so like, crazy. Ra- Albuquerque is so <laughs> racist. <laughs> hey, they label everybody. <laughs> no, it's like I, I had this heckler one time. Uh, I was I was hosting these um, shows. For, um, this one cat, he was uh, doing a BT Summer Jam or some shit. We did it for like oh, four fuck. or five months, right? <laughs> and um, I had hit him up on like Facebook or something when he first when I found out that it was going down. They they brought Tommy Davidson out, 
and um i missed that show but then i got to meet him the next uh next week and then they brought like uh, alex thomas out he was all right he was pretty funny and then uh from there it's like um I, you know, I did my shit, and they were like, oh, okay, man, you know what? We want you to come and open up for every comic we bring out here. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll do that. Fuck yeah. And then um, when we started doing that, it was like, um, that's when I started meeting a lot of people. I got a heckler, and he was the owner of Ned's. Remember when Ned's was downtown? Yeah. It was the owner of Ned's. Apparently, he was like some, I don't know. I guess well, and like said a, before it moved downtown. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, he had like an Arab type yeah. accent. And from there, I just went in on him. You know, I was talking about. You know, dude, shut the fuck up and fix my cell phone. You know, <laughs> just all types of shit. Damn. Where's my oil? I yeah. need some more. <laughs> and he got to the point where he was, like, mad. And, like, you know, I'm a small guy. Yeah. You know, even the crowd was like, Black Mike, you okay? You okay, Black Mike? We'll, we'll, we'll walk you out. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a little girl or some shit. Yeah. You know, we'll hold your hand outside the club make sure no one will fuck with you, you know? <laughs> we'll rock around. Yeah, because he was outside just, like, just huffing and puffing. So I go outside. And, matter of fact, that's who came with us uh, that night. Tiffany Haddish. You ever heard of Tiffany Haddish? Mm -hmm. Funny, funny, funny chick. So, um... We go outside, and he comes up to me. You know, I thought he wanted to fight, you know. So I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready. And um, he's like, you were pretty funny. How about I, I own place right here. How about you come in? You come in, you guys drink. You guys fucking drink. Open fucking bar. Come on in. We went in there and fucking drank all his liquor, man. That dude passed out, man. He was cool as shit at, at the end. But Damn, it was like, wait, so it turned from he was waiting for you to fight him. I thought he to was. To he was like, you got me pretty good in there. Let's yeah. party. He was like, Let, let's fucking drink. I think he was just yeah. trying to accept the fact that you destroyed his ego and made it hilarious all at the same time. Yeah, I thought I, thought I was going to get my ass kicked. <laughs> oh yeah, I am a fighter. <laughs> I weigh 127 pounds. <laughs> I'm not a fighter. <laughs> you fight with anger when you have to. That's what it is. Oh, that anger will come out, man. Jack, you have any uh, heckler stories? Uh, I know you got to. How are things out there with hecklers? Like, uh, well, bar shows are crazy because yes, they most are. Most of the yes. time, like the, the audience didn't even know it was about to happen. Yeah. Oh, sound oh, familiar? Yeah. Albuquerque That's comics. Most yeah. of those shows, and it's just like, um. Yeah. So, like, it has, you must have had something I, I had, there. like, a, it, for me, the ones that are tougher, like, I, military guys who are just, like... I can like, relate. Yeah, can dude. Relate it was, them. like, I remember I had invited my friend to this thing, and this, like, mili this dude was just, like, hammered and was, like, shouting about that he, like, just got back from his, like, <laughs> tour in Iraq. And I was just, like... I have early onset PTSD. <laughs> it really was. I was just, like, hey, man, like, can you stop... It's like I, I was yeah. like I was like I can't like if I destroy him he might just like you like, don't snap. know yeah. I was like really like I was like hey like can you just like I was like thank you for serving our country thank you and, for your service <laughs> yeah it was like thanks but like stop please did he what did he do did he, he just stop? kept yelling thanks oh, for your service you can stop your service right now we, we, we don't we need actually, to hear it yeah we actually like, okay live live your dream yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> i was like <laughs> okay i'm gonna try at nexus I'm about a month ago it was actually two or so two months ago yeah, sometime we had this uh, uh ex, veteran ex, ex marine who uh who showed up I was and there. he was drunk as f oh I yeah you were I there have it on my tablet That's right. i recorded it yep and uh, he he ended up talking shit to uh, the first comic he got there for. Uh, he finished his act and he was like, "Fuck this, I'm gone." And yeah. he's Nikki notorious. Moon. Nikki Moon is notorious for bailing on fucking hecklers. He's like, "Ah, eh, fuck this." <laughs> he was like, was like, "You can see a stand-up boner go away." I don't need some guy telling, to... interrupting me while I'm trying to talk about how much of a slut my girlfriend is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that happened, <laughs> and then uh, the next guy, you know, he was a, a guy who's in a about newer, a year. Yeah. He's a little bit green, you know. We all kind of are, relatively speaking. But uh, this guy's in his first year, and uh, the heckler just talks so much through his set. The guy delivered his jokes, but there was, you know, no you way. He wasn't into it. Yeah. So he soldiered through, and a lot of times that's what it comes down to is, like, when you're up there dying on that stage. And you're like, you just want to leave that stage so bad, yeah. but you know you have to stick it out. Like, you Five have to stick it out. So and long. you have to eat it when the silence is, like, just really obvious. And so uh, he was yeah. soldiering through that. 
But this guy was yelling at him at the same time. So the next comic that goes up is a guy named Dan Rascone, who's mm-hmm. notorious for uh, dealing with the hecklers for aggressive yeah. crowd work, especially when there <laughs> yeah, are hecklers. You got to have those guys. Do you have any uh, any people like that in your scene that just totally like uh, Dan? In a club, it's one thing to be like, "Fuck you guys," talk shit to him. It's like Gallagher's crowd work without the watermelons. <laughs> well, sort of. Well, it, at a bar show, it's kind of hard to do. To like yeah. be hardcore to someone like that yeah. because, like you said, a lot of times they didn't even know it was about to happen. Exactly, and the bartenders are like, "Hey, that's our customers." Exactly. And so, like, so you ran yeah. a show, so you had to encounter that. Well, we had right? ours was in the back, so we had like there. This bar had a separate back room. Oh, no, that's so usually a like recipe a for a successful open yes. mic. I hear. Yes, it is. Yes, you gotta so, have a back room. So, like, did you ever have to deal with that, or? Um. We had a couple people who like would come in drunk. We had like, see one time like my my uncle came to a show. <laughs> nice. It was, like, it was <laughs> made a few comments, and then another time one of my friends came and was like uh, yelling at one of our loud. shows. And it was just like man, and both times it was like I can't be the one. I was talking, <laughs> to, my, I was talking to my co- I was talking to Morgan. I was just like I can't be the one to say something because it's like I know them. Yeah. So so someone is. They're mad. probably just going deeper. She was like, I got this. It was like just. Annihilated. Did like, she? I was like, that's okay. Also, that's my uncle and my friend. So, like, take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to make a quick phone call to a friend of the show, a uh, long lost friend of the show. He's actually in Alabama. My Speaking man's in them. Comedy in Alabama. Uh, two mics on the show tonight. One of them is Black Mike, of course. And the other one is Mikey Long. Dick uh, Long. We got Mikey Long dialing in. Or are you dialing Michael. him, I guess? Yeah, I'll Richard. be dialing him. Oh, and uh, you'll have to use a different mic if you want to talk to him. Gotcha. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just slide you mine and yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got attacked with Michael Richard Long. No, 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 no. We'll dial him one more time after this. Hi, you've reached Michael Long. Please leave your name okay. and number. Dial him one more time, and then we'll just leave him a fucked up voicemail if he doesn't answer. Yeah. I did text him and tell him that we were about to call, and he said he would charge his phone. He might be masturbating or trying to shit. I don't know. It's the difference. Yeah. Maybe he's trying to do a self blumpkin. A dry blumpkin. Dry blumpkin? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, so we'll just leave a fucked up voicemail. Way to interrupt the flow. Well, hey, we got to a good stopping point. Jackie, we're done with your story, right? (laughs) 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 Fucking Mikey. Jesus Christ. All right, Mikey. Hi, you've reached Michael Long. Please leave your name and number, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Mikey. 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 It's Potential Problems Podcast. The fuck? Yeah. What's up, Mikey? Richard Long. This is Black Mike, man. What's going on? My man's in there. I was hoping to talk to you tonight. What's going on, man? Yeah, eat a dick. All right. Hang up on him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Bye, Mike. All right, let's slide the mics over. Let's do a do our closer here. We get a closing minutes set. How much time do yeah, we have? Now Alan? that we lost the flow of the show. Oh, you know, oh, what? I'll Alan, pick it back. That I'll plug shitty back decision, in and I'll pick it back up because I just remember something I needed to say. What happened? I'm oh, not. you're still on, Mike. I'm still on? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, definitely. Cool. I just had to switch it over. Kathleen Madigan didn't finish that story. Did no, you? no, let's finish that out. So, all right, all right. Kathleen so, Madigan. So I'm number nine in line. Number nine. What time did you get there? Man, I got there two days earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, you had to get there got mad there two early. two days earlier. Walked in, and this is what they tell you. They say, all right, when you go in, you run to the stage. You run up there. You introduce yourself, where you're from. You go into your act. And that's like the PA or somebody, yeah. right? Yeah, you got the headphones there. All right, all right, all right. They're ready for you. Go. I'm like, run up there. Yeah, go to Michael, yeah, I went by Michael Ogden. Yeah, Michael Ogden. 
Albuquerque, New Mexico. Would you do if you could do that over? Would you be Black Mike or would you do just be Mike Ogden again? I'd be Black Mike. Really? Because that's like yeah. who you are, like your stage persona type yes, thing. Or like who? Yes. That's like what you do. Well, out I'm there. on stage. You know, I'm not Black Mike every day, but if I'm on stage, it's just a different zone. I like to be in. Yeah, yeah. It's like I like to, I like to be that guy my 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 dad used to hate growing up. <laughs> you, oh, know, yeah. you know, I feel like a lot of people do. That. Oh man, like, I was I was just a a hundred percent antagonizer. That's all I did was antagonize the whole fucking family. Man, I thought it was funny, you know. Yeah. But I run up there. I, I I'm like I tried to improv some shit. It didn't work. I don't know why. It just came to me. You right? risked an improv well, on well, an audition. Well. You open, I, you I was open. real green. I was real green. But at the time, I was real cocky. I thought I was the fucking greatest cocky. You were going to tell him how it was. Oh, and yeah, you I were going like, to tell him. I was ready to go there and tell like, right after tell my set, the drop shit. the mic, like, y'all need me tonight, right? You know? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen like that. So I go into my joke, right? And, you know, it's my gas joke I used to do, right? And, like, I just, like, started it. I'm, like, 20 seconds in. She's like, <sighs> Punchline! I'm like, whoa, whoa, uh, no setup. You just want punchlines. All right, you got it. And from there, just I start sweating, you know. And then, oh like, no! Alonzo Bowden, Alonzo Bowden was there, right? Oh, and, you know, his deep voice, like, make me laugh. You know, I'm like, all right, fuck. <laughs> Damn, that they heckle like that. Yeah, they, yeah, oh, they were talking man. shit to me, man. And but yeah, that, that was sorry. That's, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> So I hate her. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, come to the end of the show, folks. End of the show. Uh, we, I think we had a good one. This was fun. Did you yeah. guys have fun? You guys had a good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's go around, do some plug olas, exit our guests. Uh, Black Mike, what you, what's the next show you got going uh, here? I'm just doing open mics right now, working on some new shows. Oh, nice. Next. And, and uh, Jack. Uh, where are you going to be at? Where's it? Do you know where your next stand-up uh, gig is going to be? Well, I just plugged my own show uh, in Brooklyn. It's called the Brooklyn Hideout, January 22nd. January 22nd. Uh, Kings County Saloon. Cool. Got it on the book. Sweet. Very cool. Where can people find that? Like on a website or... The Think book. about it on the book. Oh, the, the book. book. Is that a really... <laughs> the, the face Bible. Yeah. Fucking old. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Tyler, where can people see you? Well, they'll see you at a uh, show, you, right? I mean, at Thomas and Betts. It's a rubber injection molding place uh, south on Coors. Like they did to Miss yeah. Brazil's yeah. ass, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I'll see you guys at Nexus, maybe? Yes, uh, Nexus. Probably most likely Nexus. Yeah, Very that's cool. the best place to be. Hey, hey, Nexus Brewery. Every Tuesday, folks. 7.30 show starts. 6.45-ish is the sign-up. Uh, Alan... Uh, check out Alan Clark Films on YouTube. Oh, wait, you, you won't yeah, see new episodes Yeah, we can't upload there. our new shit up there. Copyright Redmax. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> we talk shit about the uh, karaoke fucking company, and they fucking didn't like it. Yeah, they, 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 they copyright stri- yeah. stroke our video, and now we can't upload long videos on there, which is our entire show. So we have so a different... Until, yeah, we have a new channel. But anyways, iTunes. Well, at least they're listening, right? That's the kind fr- of a nice... Yeah. And live stream. <laughs> iTunes, live stream, YouTube. Uh, check out Third Thursday Comedy Contest. Tomorrow, Tractor Brewery. Uh, Dan Rascone's going to be there. Mary Bird, Sarah Mowry, Rusty Rutherford. I know I'm forgetting some people, but go check it out. It is fucking free. And you know New Mexico loves free shit. Uh, Potential Problems Podcast is also free, just to point that out. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks, guys. Bye-bye.